All right, everybody. So uh, last day of uh, the trading year. And, um, you know, if you were trading this time, even like today or this last, say, about two, three weeks in different markets, you, you, you gained a valuable skill. And that's specifically being able to trade in uh, low ranges, small ranges. And uh, that's a really valuable skill because if you can trade small ranges, you, you can trade anything. All right. Um, anyway, so it's just a skill because if you can trade uh, these markets this month, that means that during the rest of the year, any day, you'll be able to trade. You don't need a trend day. You don't need any, you know, any, anything special. You can trade any, any day. So what was the opportunity, even today? I mean, there's always a one to two opportunities a day, intraday trends. So I'll go over in uh, crude and I'll show you what makes it work and what makes it not work and all that. So this early morning, say, you know, this was like 4.30, there was a selling wave and then up, down, up, and then 640 here. You, you don't want to trade this. Even if you're awake and looking, don't trade this. Why? Because at the open, um, actually before, around 8, what they'll do is they're going to run the high. And if you had a bullish uh, move, they, they're going to run the lows. That's what basically happens when, when you have a session open it just wipes out uh, prior highs and lows so this is something i know and the same thing happened today you have the selling and then you know early morning it's giving you it's telling you it's going to go down but the open around the open 8 8 30 what happens is they they're going to run the highs it's just something that happens all right so bang 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 boom right there's the up thrust okay so we see the up thrust right so i mean you, you just just be ready that's why you know you got to trade after the open if you're doing the es you know after 8 30. all right if you have a step position established before that it's going to get run that's what the open is used for is to like take out both sides basically clean slate anyway so after that you have this wave and i knew that's it game over Game over. Direction is told. Biggest selling wave in 19 waves. After this up thrust, boom. So we have springboard signals here and here. Is whichever one you know take boom. But understand that the move is very uh, shitty because of small ranges. So you have a little move. You know. If you catch this here and you get up thrusted, you still get a second move, tap, and you get a bigger move than the stop. So it's just a matter of, of all that. Now, there's one thing I'm going to explain on what helps qualify the this selling wave. This is actually a sign of weakness. But what qualifies, and I've said multiple times, you know, I'm telling you guys, because I know stuff, and what makes it work. The first thing is, from the extreme high or extreme low, depending on, you know, if it's an up wave or down wave, from the extreme high, you should have a thrust. You can consider it volume off the top. If this was bullish wave, it would be volume off the bottom. And I've showed in Wyckoff, you know, the exact, exact thing in uh, the first study where it shows the volume off the bottom and all that. So the first thing you want to see is this guy, this behavior, aggression. The change of behavior wave, a sign of weakness wave, starts with a change of behavior bar or sign of weakness bar. Again, a strong change of behavior wave, a sign of weakness wave, 
starts with a sign of weakness bar. This is very important. If it's not there, I'm going to be scratching my head like, what the, what's going on here? Because buy low, sell high. When they sell high, they sell heavy. These are the best prices to sell. It's an upthrust. It's the best price to sell. So you sell heavy here. There should be distributive action here. And there should be a break or a big wide range bar. Because these are the best prices to sell because the highest price. So why wouldn't they sell? At the best prices, the biggest, you know, the best, you know. So do you have that? You have it right here. You see that bar? That's a good bar. That bar is bigger than 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 13 bars. That, that one bar is bigger than the 13 that are coming after it. Very, very good bar. That helps qualify it. Second thing is, so again, remember this principle, change of behavior wave starts with a change of behavior bar. Keep that in your head. All right. Now, second thing is, Where's the distribution? Because a change of behavior typically has not only the change of behavior bar, but it'll have accumulation or distribution in the background. This is critical because this is where the stops should go against. The stop should go against accumulation or distribution. Again, the stops should go against the accumulation or distribution. Why? Because when they pull back, it is very hard to take out the heavy volume there. All of that volume will have to be absorbed. That position and all that will have to be absorbed. So do you have the heavy volume distribution? The answer is yes. And for this, you should have this type of chart. It's right here, right here, and I think right here too. The 36 and the 32 and break. And I'm going to show you now where this principle comes from, from the perspective of accumulation and distribution right out of the Wyckoff course. So give me a minute and bring it up. All right, so the exceptionally large volume, and you're just mentioning some days here, with the failure to record any further gain on the high volume is an indication of distribution. Basically, it's a lot of effort, but somewhere here, it says that after it does that, when it breaks, Let me find that. I think this is it. We now become very suspicious of this advance on such large volume, so large volume, particularly the failure to hold a quick up thrust to a new high. So large volume at the top of a wave on such heavy turnover, which is a character, what I do, which is a characteristic of distribution. A characteristic of distribution is when you have a lot of volume at the top of a wave or top of, you know, multiple bars at the top, and then it cannot hold, it breaks. All right, so here again, we become very suspicious of the advance with such large volume and particularly the failure to hold. Bingo. Large volume that fails to hold. And that's all you really need to know because this is a characteristic of distribution. That's it. So here you have an example of 
you up, down, up, down, bingo, right up here. You have that heavy volume right here. And what happens? Does it fail to hold? Yeah, it has this thrust and that follow through. So this is distributive. At the top of a wave, right, because right now it was going sideways and then it's, it's waving up and then up and up and then right here and then it breaks. So once it does that, it just comes back to pull back to test that area, to test the distribution area and it just goes down. Basically, that's the reason why this trade worked. In my opinion, that's the CM uh, distribution. Just like over here, you know, you had some uh, down movement, they, they were buying, and then you have that wave up. What happens? Wave comes back down, it holds that same area, and then makes a higher high. Here, at that higher high, you have that heavy volume, you have that bar break, and a follow through, and then comes back and pull back to test that area, and continues to go down. That volume that you see in the accumulation or distribution is serving, in a simple way, is serving as support or resistance. All right, that's like the simplest way I can put it. That volume itself is serving as support, and here, resistance, because you have all that volume, and then you have a break, it's a resistance area. It's actually distribution, but that distribution is resistance. And the reason why is because if it goes back to that area, it has to absorb all those folks who are going to come out, and it, then it has to go, then it has to, you know, further press higher. So it serves as resistance. And that's why you have this, uh, you know, this volume here on the up wave. Then you have a break, comes back. Where does it stop? Right there. Here, you have the volume break. Where does it stop? Right there. So this is why you need the tape reading chart. Because you will not be able to see this on the wave chart. Can you see this here? Can you see the 31 and the 37? The 3100 and the 3700. Can you see that on the wave chart? You cannot. It's just a rally. How do you know that rally is going to hold? You know it because there was accumulation here. How do you know there's accumulation? When you can't see it on the wave chart, you need to see it on this tape reading chart. Here, you have the break. It's pulling back. Where is it going to go? How do you know it? there's a big chance it's going to stop right there? If there's distribution, how do you know there's distribution? Heavy volume. How do you know it's heavy volume? Tape reading chart, because it's not on the wave chart. And then what happens? Taps, reverse, go down. So this is what I'm trying to get across to you guys, to the Wyckoff community. You know, so uh, someone's got to show this. Um, and it's very simple. Like, you don't need to do all that bid-ask and... Delta and all that shit, you know, it's right here. Hell of a lot of volume, break, comes back, serves a resistance, why it's distribution. A lot of volume here, pops up, waves up, with this waves, come back, holds, why, a lot of accumulation, support, bingo. So that's why this trade worked. The prior trade here, can you say why it didn't work? When you had a selling wave, you have springboard one, springboard two, it goes down. But one of the reasons why it did not work is you don't have that high volume print here. You don't have the high volume print. So it just kind of pulled back and it went down, right? But it's not enough distribution, not clear distribution, you know? Yes, there was some, and later on when it hit that area, it did reject. There's no question, it did reject. But it tapped that area. There was some distribution. It's not heavy. It's not heavy enough for my indications, indicators to pick it up, right? But there is some. Where is it? I'll show you right here. It's 2100 right there. And then the break. That 2100 is bigger than any print in the break. It comes back there. 
3300 selling comes back hits the accumulation area goes higher so so there is some but not like this area where you have 36 and then another 32 and a break you know so this is much more and that serves as good good resistance and also it's after after the open because as i explained in the open they're going to run the highs or the lows that's if you see gold and all of that that's what happens anyway i'm done this was the trade it's a shitty trade it's very little trade but you have small ranges nothing you can do so just take it as a learning lesson and uh, let's go to the ES. so on the es uh, so you had um actually it's i guess it was you had initial selling up here you had the selling you had a springboard here and it went down then you had another springboard around here and it went down so i mean i don't know what else to say it just uh you know it just and, and let's find the distribution all right so this is in thousands where do we know there's clear distribution it's right here remember you need the volume and the break that right there is 37 and then you have a break the hell am i and then you have the test and that's where it stops and then it goes down so i mean again you have that overhead resistance and you can leverage that to place your stops and all of that stuff so that's all i have to say there's the trade selling springboard down sets up another song with springboard down and uh, i don't know about all the at the bottom here i don't really see any prints so anyway have a good uh rest of your day night and uh year and uh we'll talk we'll start uh, next year thank you bye